The release of the Creative Cloud Libraries with Adobe Muse opens the door to organizing and sharing assets like never before. Now, I think the best way to really see how Creative Cloud Libraries work with Muse is to see it in action. So let's go through a couple of my favorite new features with this integration. So I'm here in Adobe Muse, and I'm ready to start building out a website. This is my Pigeon Kickstarter website. And I have an art director that went in and created a spec sheet or basically a visual design in Photoshop around how he'd like to see the website appear when I design it. So I'm going to switch over to Photoshop. And here within the Photoshop open dialog, I'm going to click on the Pigeon Specs. This is the file that my art director created. Now I'm presented with a new library from Document Window. If you don't like to see this every time you open up something in Photoshop, you can dismiss the window and access the same feature from within the library panel, this little icon here on the lower left, to create a library from the current document. With the file open here now, what I'm going to do is select what I want to carry over to the library. Now, in this case, I'm going from Photoshop to Muse. And Muse is really a web layout application. So some of the attributes in Photoshop won't really apply as I carry over. Uh, we don't support character styles right now from Photoshop to Muse. So I've unchecked that. I do want to carry over the colors. Layer styles really don't apply, and smart objects are nice to retain. That way, if something was placed in something like Illustrator, that reference will carry over. I'm going to go ahead and click the Create New Library button. And the library engine here is going to go in. And as I can see, it's extracting each of these images. I can scroll up towards the top. Here's all the colors that it's pulled out. And the images, both vector from Illustrator and photos from Photoshop, are all right there very, very quickly. Now, this file has been called Pigeon Specs, which is the name of the document that it was extracted from. And that's a good name. I'll go ahead and uh, stick with that. But I could easily come in in the CC library and rename those Pigeon Specs if I wanted to. Now this is all set in Photoshop, let's go over and take a look at what it's done to Muse. So I'll switch to the Muse application. And I've got just a blank page here. I just want to show you how to interact with these assets. I'm going to come over to my panels on the right and select CC Libraries. And then I'm going to, in the dropdown, go ahead and select that Pigeon Specs, the new library we created. Now I can tell right away that a lot of colors came over. Turns out my art director experimented with a lot of different colors in that original spec file. And I may not want all of them. That's OK. I can come and select any of the colors that are here. Let's go ahead and switch that back to white real quick. And I'm going to create a container to play in and select some of these colors. I can just easily go in and delete the ones that I don't need and strip it back down to just the basics. I can now come in and fill that container with a color from that library set, set that aside. I also have a number of other elements. You'll notice there's raster files like PNG from Photoshop. I also have vector content, SVG content from Illustrator. Now, as I work with these content, I can just select an image and place a copy within my application. But if I want to make sure that any changes that happen in this cloud library file are retained and are kept track of in my Muse document, when I come to place an object, instead of dragging it over, I'm going to right click and select Placed Linked. So if I come in and place this linked SVG content, what I can do is if I want to make a design change, let's say I want to change the look of this award icon. I can just click on it and select Edit. The CC library is going to look at the source application that created that. I can then come into this object and very easily make a change. Let's say I decide for some reason that I want this individual path, this guy, to be filled with a dark color gray. All I need to do is pull down on File to Save. And notice real quickly down there in the bottom, I'm getting a progress bar as those changes are uploaded to the cloud. If I come back to Muse again, 
right away in the library folder that's already been updated, but this did not get updated. That's because as a designer, I may not necessarily want to apply that change. I don't want things that just suddenly change without telling me. So if I were to open up this document again, I would get an alert that some of the assets have changed. I can also come over to the Assets Panel tab, and I notice I've got two assets, one of which has been changed. My little icon here has the cloud and a little alert that lets me know it's been updated. Right-clicking on that to update the asset will apply the change to that object. We've seen what you can do with Illustrator and Photoshop content as you bring it into Muse, but CC libraries are also really powerful with content that you create directly within Muse. Let's switch over to a more fleshed out version of the site, and I'm gonna go on into the master page here. Now I've built out some complex content, things like a contact form where I've defined paragraph and graphic styles. I've got a whole series of states that I've carefully styled out. I also have an accordion menu here that when you drop it down, it's a accordion widget that's been styled and configured with a menu widget and a button. Lots of complex work that I'd like to reuse. What I can do is take any of this Muse content and just drag it into the library folder. It will carry on over there. I can just assign it a new name. I can call this uh, Form Footer. And notice that it has the Muse logo indicating that it was created or compiled within Muse. So we've looked at how you can share content between your Creative Cloud applications. There's another even more powerful uh, feature with CC libraries that allow you to share with other Creative Cloud users. So I have this library set, and if I want to come over into the right menu here, you'll notice I have two different share capabilities. I can collaborate or share a link. Now if I collaborate, I can send an invitation to another Creative Cloud subscriber, and we can both add, delete, and edit any of the content that's in this library. It's powerful, but it can be a little dangerous if you don't want others to actually make changes to your work. Um, there's a, definitely a use case for that. But if I want to instead share up my library and make sure that no one else would make changes to it, I can select Share Link. And what that will do is create a public link that I can distribute to anyone I'd like. They can then come in and download the library and have it for their own to make changes and go forward with without affecting my original source in any way. Now, when I generate that link, it snapshots the current state of the library. So if I make changes tomorrow and I want them to have it, I probably would generate a new snapshot link and share that link up with those folks. I've only touched on some of the real features that CC Libraries brings to your workflow, and I encourage you to give it a try.